this point, I plan to take up something else. Once again, the energy source and I am calling 1a dot 3. I have already talked about in IC engine vehicle, I will have petrol tank and the petrol in IC vehicles will be the energy source. In electric vehicles, I have told you battery and electricity charge in electric vehicles will be the energy source. Let us understand that in more details. We have given you some understanding, let us understand that in more details. The question, what should be the size or capacity of the energy source? How much energy do you want to keep in a vehicle? Why is it important? You will expend certain energy per kilometer. This will determine the driving range of the vehicle. So, based on the size, the range that you want to go, you will determine the size or capacity of the energy source. So, petrol tank or the battery should be appropriately sized to support the required drive. I want to drive for so many kilometers for so long with infrequent fill ups or charge requirement, not change charge requirement. This should be battery charge requirement. Hmm? I do not want very frequently to go to the petrol station. I do not want to frequently charge. This is what I want to drive and that will determine the size and capacity of the energy source. So, question is how should you size them? It will, you have to start with a question. How much battery petrol will I use per kilometer of drive on average. In India, in Hindi, there is a famous slogan called Kitna Deti Hai. One liter of petrol, how many kilometers does am I drive or per kilometer, how many liters, how many, what, what fraction of a liter will I use on the average. It is a very similar question you have to ask for electric vehicles. How much battery energy you will require per kilometer of drive on the average? For example, petrol is measured in liters. So, how many liters per kilometer? Battery energy is measured in terms of kilowatt hour is the energy, electrical energy unit. So, how many kilowatt hour? or watt hours do you require per kilometer. Kilowatt hour is a thousand watt hour. So, how many watt hours you drive per kilometer? For example, the sedan that I talked about, it could give me 12 kilometers in a liter. So, I require 1 by 12 liter or 0 0.08 liter per kilometer of petrol. It can drive 8 kilometers from when one unit of electricity, 1 kilowatt hour. So, I require 1, 20, 1 kilometer divided by 8, 1 kilowatt hour divided by 8 or 125 watt hour per kilometer. Now, this was in my sedan. Now, if I have a two wheeler, I will be able to get more kilometers per liter of petrol or per kilowatt hour of battery. So, it will depend on the kind of drives. The next question that I will ask, okay, fine, this is the, how should one size them? I have already found out how much energy I need per kilometer. Then how many, how much do we drive the vehicle? How much in, how much in are we going to drive? Am I going to drive 50 kilometer, 100 kilometer, 200 kilometers? How much will I drive per week? At what is the convenience for filling up the petrol pump, pump going to a petrol pump, and fill up the fuel tank or what is the convenience in terms of battery charging. When we answer these four questions, then we will say this is the size or capacity of the energy source. Do you understand this? Fairly simple. These four questions, how much petrol you require per kilometer or how much many, how much battery energy or 
watt hour you require per kilometer of drive. Depends on your vehicle. How much will you like to drive in a day? How much do you drive per week? How frequently are we ready to charge the vehicle or fill the petrol? These four questions will answer this. And remember, this will impact the capacity and capacity will impact the economics. And in the course, we will be working this out in detail. The second question, is there a wear and tear of the storage? Now, this question may look funny because petrol tank there is no wear and tear or at least for not for long time. You buy a fuel tank, keep it. 5 years, 8 years, unlikely to happen anything. And even something goes wrong occasionally because it gets hit or something like that, you replace his cost is few thousand rupees. Life of fuel tank is long, cost is low, not so for battery. Life of battery is limited cost is very high. Life of battery is limited in terms of number of years and in terms of number of cycles that, that you can charge and discharge. Typically a battery will say you cannot keep it for more than 7 years. You will learn much more about that and probably you cannot do more than 1500 charges and discharges every uh, for the life of the battery. That depends on the kind of battery. This is important because that will tell you that I do not want, yeah, I will say I want this bigger storage. If I want a big storage and that means big battery, my cost will go up like anything. Hmm? So, we have to worry about this and therefore, we also have to worry that I get a battery, but it will I have to replace it after 5 years, 3 years, 4 years. What will it cost? In petrol tank, I do not have to worry. The only thing is, if, when I fill petrol, it is costly. In battery, the cost is not there. For fuel tank, costs are low, just as a petrol container, life is long. For not so for electric battery, electric battery capacity deteriorates over time and deteriorates over number of cycles. Now, depends on the kind of battery, you may have 700 cycles or 3000 cycles of charge discharge, 6 to 10 years of calendar life and expensive 15,000 to 20,000 rupees per kilowatt hour and you will have to calculate how many kilowatt hour and all that. We will look at it, probably 10 kilowatt hour, 20 kilowatt hour. So, it is very expensive. So, expensive and capacity deteriorates. Fuel tank is low cost, capacity does not deteriorate. So, obviously, we have been working with living with petrol, we would be very happy, except the good part is fuel cost is just opposite. Petrol costs us crossing 100 rupees per liter. What is the consumption? Am I going to do 12 kilometer? Straight away tells me 8 rupees per kilometer. Probably more because there is other than this fuel, there is a engine oil and all those things I have to use. Of course, the calculation that I told you was for mid-sized car, sedan car. Depends on drive to type of vehicle therefore, how much, mm, what is the consumption of petrol per kilometer, vehicle energy efficiency, liters per kilometer and typical drive cycle. Am I going to drive, accelerate, decelerate, accelerate, decelerate? Am I going to go up, down, up, down? Then it will go less. A medium sized car can typically drive 10 kilometers per liter. There are better vehicles, lower vehicles, but 10 kilometers per liter is a very, very common thing. Electricity cost on the other hand is very less, 5 rupees, 6 rupees per kilometer, watt hour. The question this time you will ask is what is the consumption of electricity per kilometer of drive? Again depends on the type of vehicle, vehicle efficiency in terms of energy or watt hour per kilometer, 
typical drive cycle are you going to drive fast, speed, up, down, accelerate, decelerate. A medium size sedan that I talked about gives you 8 km per hour, kilowatt hour. So, you have to understand this duality. Petrol injection from the fuel tank, from the controller or current injection. Petrol vehicle, one may draw petrol to fuel tank more or from, from petrol fuel tank at whatever rates you want. You can increase, decrease quite easily. Hmm? Depending on what your engine requires, you can draw more petrol, less petrol, no problem. Wear and tear does not depend on the rate at which you take out. Not so with battery. In electric vehicle, rate of current injection charging rate or extraction discharge rate impacts battery life. If you charge it slowly or discharge slowly, battery life is good, otherwise battery life reduces. Since the voltage is constant, current is proportional to power. So, if you draw more power or charge higher power, battery life gets impacted. Normally, this charge rate or this discharge rate is called C rate of a vehicle battery. We will discuss this C rate in much more detail later on, but this C rate of battery will impact the life of the battery. Normally, high rates are not desirable. If you charge the battery or discharge the battery in 4 5 hours, it is okay. If you charge discharge the battery in 1 hour, not so good. If you charge discharge the battery in half hour, you are in trouble. Similarly, temperature at which you are charging discharging or running the vehicle makes a difference. If you are running it at 25 degrees centigrade, it is good for the battery. If you are trying to do it at 35, 45 in India, 48, not good for battery. Whether you charge or discharge, temperature hurts the battery. Then do you fully charge discharge, depth of discharge? Do you make it empty and fill it completely? That is not good for battery. For fuel tank, it does not matter. Hmm? You do not want to do full discharge or full charge. Battery life can get impacted. Typically, you like to leave 5 to 10 percent below and you do not want to charge the last 5 to 10 percent. That, so, you, you do not utilize the battery fully in one cycle. That is good for the battery. So, the charge rate, C rate, temperature, depth of discharge, all this will impact the battery life and we will discuss this in greater detail as you go on. So, to sum up, in petrol vehicle, the container costs are low. Low upfront cost, container requires rare replacement, fuel costs are high and it has become so high in last 6 months to and 1 year that petrol vehicles are really pinching and time has come to replace with electric vehicle. In the electric vehicle, container costs or the battery costs are very high, high upfront costs. And then it requires replacement 4 years to 8 years, depending on the rate of charge discharge, operation temperature and depth of discharge. But fuel costs are very low. Because fuel costs are very low, as long as you can finance the battery, you do not mind a little bit of extra upfront cost, it works out very good. For 2 wheeler, 3 wheeler, today in India, it is much better to have electric vehicle, lower cost. 4 wheeler, it is getting there, battery is larger, upfront costs are high. There is one more thing that I should point out and I will discuss that in detail later on. When you know, when we started doing vehicles and petrol vehicles, well actually by the way, we started with electric vehicles in the beginning and then we moved petrol vehicles. When we started petrol vehicles, a petrol per se, is highly inflammable 
And therefore, the petrol vehicle in the beginning was very dangerous, highly inflammable. Smallest spark can completely burn the petrol. And very quickly, the whole petrol will burn and vehicle will burn. And it used to happen. Over time, we tamed it. We learned to handle petrol. Now, hardly any accident takes place because petrol getting sparked. We will learn this. Actually, very high energy density, very easily inflammable. And we have learned to tame it. Electric vehicle, we have battery, which is much lower energy density. But we have not yet learned to tame it. And therefore, you hear occasionally of fire in the battery. Even though energy density is much lower than petrol. Why? Because you have not done a good job. We are still learning. That is the biggest challenge today. In last few months, you have seen number of fires. That is because poorly designed battery. At least in this course, you learn what is a poorly designed battery. And you need to learn to design battery well, such that you are taming the battery. It does not have that high energy density and it become as safe as petrol vehicle today, probably safer over time. This is what we learn in this course.